Hello, time to put your pants on, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folk, or not, because it is time for So What Now? The one and only quarantine show to get your creative juices flowing as our world is slowly but surely falling apart. That blue-haired bombshell over there is the Roxy She. Oh, Anthony, that's so sweet. And that acne-scarred gangly stick over there is Mr. Anthony Ma. Rox, I was uh, trying to compliment you there. Oh. I was hoping that you'd, you know, maybe make a change and reciprocate. You know, Anthony, I really want to, but I kind of wish you had your pube beard to cover up that scar of yours. Is it an acne scar? I mean, did it you is. name it? It's like it's like the size of like Jupiter right now. You should His give name, him a name is Carol. Okay, oh. if you wanted to know. Okay? Wow, I really like that. Hey, Carol, what's up? <laughs> Thanks. It's saying hi. Hello. Ah, hi. So, <clears throat> whatever. Enough of my acne scars. Okay. So we want to just thank all of you for tuning in so far to our show. And honestly, on behalf of the entire team over here, we are so very grateful for all your support. It's just been crazy. So we have a special announcement. We just reached over how many? 600 likes on our Fache book? What is going 600, on? 600, 600, 600 what likes. is life? I mean, like we are basically celebrities, Anthony. And Paparazzi. I, I, like, we are so famous, are you know what I mean? I know. Yeah, totally. But um, <laughs> we are especially grateful to our partners who have made this special episode possible. Taiwanese American Film Festival, TAF, and TAF right LA, Taiwanese American Professionals, Los Angeles. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> and I just want to talk about being Taiwanese American for a second, because I Please. always identify myself as a Taiwanese American artist, because organizations like this and are extremely helpful. They create programs and resources for people in our community on the rise. And uh, I just want to share a small story. I mean, I know I roast Anthony all the time on this show, but like, I love him so much. He's like a little brother to me. Stop. And like, we met like as filmmakers, but in December of um, 2016, I was in Taiwan with my family and I got a FaceTime call from Anthony who was calling from his Uber. He was Uber driving. <laughs> And um, hashtag, these are real stories about, you know, what it takes to be an actor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> Anthony called me. He's like, hey, dear, which means older sister. And he's like, what do you think about, like, creating, like, a Taiwanese American film festival? Like, a film festival for us, right? <clears throat> and I just thought, who would want that or who would need that? And uh, I just thought there's these larger Asian American film festivals who we love, you know, um, and uh, he was, I was like, would people look to something so specific, so niche? <clears throat> and Anthony told me, he was like, when you were, you know, starting out as a filmmaker, didn't you wish that you had people that you could turn to or um, a community that could, or, or, that you, or like resources and programs that you could like just look up and just a backbone and support while you were finding a way up. And I'm like, of course, everybody does. And then Anthony said, well, you can actually provide that for people now. And that shook me that. because you said that. And, and oh. I realized that we are all able to be like, you don't have to make it like a big movie star or a big film director or whatever. But if you're on the ladder somewhere, even if you're not at the top yet, you can lean down and help someone who is just below you on their way up as well. And I just thought that was the whole reason why that was created. And that's why being Taiwanese American is so important to me. And, you know, being a part of TAF for the first three years, mm -hmm. you know, it's really become a part of me and my identity is very important. My filmmaker, like identity, that's cool and all, but my roots are in who I am. So I don't know, just wanted to share that little story. It's crazy. Uh, this last three years, or the past, it's been four years now, but the first three years of TAF has been just a great experience with you, Gia. I, I found a, like another voice that I had within myself, and I don't think I would have uh, been able to scream so loud with that voice had I not had like a great partner like Aww. you beside me, you know? But, you know, uh, just picking back, piggybacking off of like the Taiwanese uh, experience, you, I'm Taiwanese, my mom's Taiwanese, 
we are, both are Taiwanese American now for so long and we have very unique experiences. And these are experiences that a lot of us share, a lot of Taiwanese Americans share. So it's, it's somewhat uh, unfair that we don't see a lot of these stories and only see a, list, a blip of them every so often. And these are experiences that need to be seen and need to be, need to be heard. And that is why TAF is there to hopefully put a spotlight to these kind of stories. So <clears throat> because of that, we are going to switch things up a bit what on our mean? So What Now switch show. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, I'll tell you what I mean right now. Okay, we're gonna. Wait, keep Anthony. Our Anthony, wait. Hold on. Hold on. on. I, yes. I mean, I know we're editing. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, can yeah. I can I add something to what you yeah. said? Yeah. Um, go go go. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Jack. I'm so sorry. You're gonna have to work with this. Go um, for it. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think that's what's beautiful about like the Asian American experience is that we're all so different. We're so mm -hmm. incredibly diverse. Yeah. And the range of our experiences and the depth of our experiences haven't even like we we're starting to explore it more deeply now but this is it's just crazy, like the yeah. start you know so the the movement is like well on its way but i'm excited to see like what comes out of it after you know more representation and more exposure has happened but anyways yeah thank you anthony that was really beautiful yeah that w it's been fun rocks so sydney lou you have a a lot of pressure on you to continue this. <laughs> no pressure. You can do whatever you want. It's fine. We love you. We trust you. Love you, Cindy. So <clears throat> because of our conversation just now, I'm going to switch things up a bit. You ready for this? What do you mean? Wait. I'm going to keep our audience on their toesies. You ready for this? Okay. No. No. I'm going to put our sponsored ad at the top of our show right Wait, now. Wait, Anthony, what? We didn't talk about this. Jack, do you go. know about this? Wait, it's what? It's okay. Jack, hit it. For the past three years, the Taiwanese American Film Festival has championed up-and-coming filmmakers and has built a platform to celebrate stories that are less told in mainstream media. We couldn't license to show any of those said films, so here's a couple examples Roxy and Anthony made with the little time they had. We are sorry. Nice place. I like, uh... Hey, what kind of Chinese are you? Oh, um... I'm Taiwanese. Oh, dude. Like, I love Pad Thai, bro. It is awesome. No, 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 no. Taiwanese. Taiwanese. Yeah, I heard you the first time, man. I also love Mui Thai. It is the shit. Like, I do mixed martial arts Every day, bro. You want to see? Like, mm, mm, oh, I use this oh. elbow. I oh. use the bow, oh. man. Yeah, sure impressive they were there. Five muscles on that elbow. Yeah, you know, I'm awesome. So, check it. I got like a personal question for you. Is it true that Thailand is like the Vegas of the world? Check, please. Hi. Is all the cash you asked for, Lynn. Apologies for taking so long. It's all the cash I got. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Ty. Unfortunately, Shrimp Shrimping Company has no further use for your services. Bring me the boba. Hey, what are you doing there? Hey, yo, don't go crazy with this. You got all the money you got. I gave you all the cash I got. Hey. You don't want to do this. I got a family of delivery binges, man. No. 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 The Taiwanese American Film Festival. We know you can do a lot better. Submit your film when they open again. We beg you.
Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, some may call our format messy, but we like to call ourselves innovative, right, Anthony? Oh, yes. Geez. Uh, to find out more about TAF and TAF LA, please visit www.taf.la or tap-la.org. These are so similar <laughs> for more information. We'll also link it in our description box so you guys can check that out. In all honesty, our show is going to feel a little bit different today because Randall's schedule, we actually had to pre-record his interview earlier this week. So if you're wondering why Anthony and I have random costume changes throughout this episode, that's the reason why. So, script supervisors, you better not call us out for a live stream discontinuity. Okay, all right, calm down there. Okay, film nerd, not everyone is a filmmaker that's watching. Okay, Rox? But everyone could be a storyteller, so they could at least get started on knowing what everything is. Oh. Okay, touche, that's true. So, <clears throat> bear with us as you will have to deal with just these two good looking faces for a couple of segments today. Oh my God, you must be so excited. But we're gonna make, we promise to make as much time as possible for Randall's interview because it drops so many truth bombs, knowledge, <laughs> insight, like basically like all around. Like you're gonna wanna stick around for that because uh, like Randall Park is like fucking amazing. Oh yeah. And uh, we don't wanna miss a drop of it. But first. Our very first segment, which is called News that makes us go, ah, ah. ah. hit it. Ah. Okay, so since it's just Rox and I for this segment today, we actually won't be competing on which news story is. Wait, better. we're not? No, we're not. Okay, sorry. Why? I will tell you why, because we, why, we, why are we even competing when it comes to heartwarming news during a global crisis? It doesn't seem right. Because we're always competing. You will lose, Anthony. I don't care. Okay. All right. Fine. So competitive. Jeez. <laughs> hey, so for those of you that don't know about this segment, we're all in difficult times at this moment, and there's bad news around every corner. So news that makes us go, ah, gives us a little sprinkle of posit positivity of uh, people doing good deeds during this time, and that deserves some recognition in the spotlight. I will go first. Go ahead. Okay, so this is my article, Community Raises Over $90,000 to Help Gilroy Donut House Family Amid Pandemic. So we all see what has happened with small businesses when uh, the pandemic and the shutdown first happened. P like mom and pop houses are dying left and right. And what I love about this story is that um, this donut shop, Gilroy Donut house in Gilroy, California has raised over $90,000 by the community. Like wow. the townspeople have like started GoFundMes and everything just to stop it from going under because not only was COVID affecting its business, like the head of the household, like the father, he uh, passed away with a brain aneurysm. So it was like a double whammy in terms of like yeah. what they had to deal with. So it was just wonderful to see everybody coming together to make sure that they don't go under. And uh, this like re really hits like a personal and a soft spot for me because these mom and pop shops have built their businesses for decades and even generations. And a lot of them are disappearing so quickly from this, right. you know, that was mine. I just thought that was very moving. Um, I, and it I'm was beautiful to, to experience. Uh, it, like, that was uh, like a good 10 seconds. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. Thank you. Yours is like a lot worse, right? Just kidding. I mean, it's all You know what? Stuff, no, no, it's not too it's not too far off. It's pretty similar from what uh, you were talking about. Oh, so, really? Yeah, a lot of small businesses are affected. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to focus my story on Manhattan's Chinatown's restaurant. Restaurants that's being closed over there. So with nearly 90% of Manhattan's Chinatown restaurants, they're all closed at the moment. And most of those are like smaller mom and pop shops owned by decades long uh, couples that have just been there forever. And these people speak little English and they rarely use any internet to conduct any business. So especially in this time during our modern technology, you know, era, this is highly affecting them. So there's this guy, 24 year old Justin McKibben, who is a Chinese Vietnamese American who lives in Manhattan, this Chinatown. His employer happens to be Square. You know, there's like credit card Square mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm, yeah. So mm -hmm. he launched a digital card initiative to support these local businesses. So they have this, this sort of a, uh, this 
the bridge to that technology to help them reach out to their communities instead of going through their old ways, like through just word of mouth. Now they're actually on the internet platforms and they're, they're being helped by more than just 20, more than 25 young professionals that are just helping all these uh, China, Manhattan Chinatown businesses that are affected. So it's, it's crazy how people are just stepping up and, you know, we all love food. We all have, like, I'm from Arcadia and we have a lot of these businesses that are still just handling cash, you know, and just through cash registers. And they, a lot of restaurants are affected, but they will be affected the most out of all of them, you know? So it's just good that uh, there are people helping these kind of people and yeah, all positivity. And, and you know, what's crazy is that like, we actually want to encourage everybody to go if you can buy more Asian takeout because mm -hmm. businesses that are Asian owned are getting twice as much, like they're getting hurt twice as much due to, to the backlash of racism. Mm -hmm. So if you can just like these small businesses need our support as much as, as, as we can give them, you know, but yeah. I will give that Anthony and, uh, Oh, so I think we're, I mean, come on, no I, competition. You know, I, I we're, have a lot of respect. Same. I had a yeah. lot of respect for yours because like, I just think, mm -hmm. you know, when we have older generations, mom and pops and like mm -hmm. this tying into the article last week, which I won, it talks about <laughs> like, you know, the older generation having a hard time keeping up with technology and like, yeah. you know, even applying credit card usage now. And like, right. you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just another layer of having to struggle in a, in a more difficult way in a right. difficult time right mm -hmm. but so so if you're hungry don't just buy one meal from these asian restaurants buy a week's worth yes <laughs> yes <laughs> agreed agreed please yeah. buy more if you have the ability buy more than than you can you know share mm -hmm. with your friends at a safe distance so anthony go. yes is it time i think it is time i think so hmm mm. but We've kept them waiting long enough, I know, but I just want them to keep waiting for just a little bit because I want to hype Randall Park up a bit before we get to him. So how about okay. let's play a little reel of some of his greatest hits. Jack, greatest hit it! Do you pee and poo? <laughs> You've heard the stories, huh? Yes, I pee and the poo. So you have a butthole? I've got a butthole and it's working overtime. You are awesome. You know, this is so weird. You are like the coolest guy. Best believe I put me on the piece and it was better than any scene. You can see in speed. I'm telling you, for real. I punch me. He could duck bullets, but he couldn't duck me. I'm feeling so refreshed. The new sheriff's in town. Check the button on my vest. It's Keanu with the boots around the <laughs> Oculus. Now I'm just cruising oh, the metropolis. Am I prime like Optimus? Everything I is half full. Know. I'm an optimist. Haven't done ish yet. I feel accomplished. Best pugilist, less than a scientist. Strong enough to survive the apocalypse. And any summit I could be on. Any point break, I could surf with my Gion. Take any fight or any class. I'm going to put you on your ass. Then I'll pee on you. Pee on you. Pee on you. Best believe I punch Keanu. Keanu Reeves and it was better than any scene you could see in speed. I'm telling you for real, I punch Leo. He could duck bullets, but he couldn't duck me. All right, folks, the moment you've all been waiting for. It is so hard to believe because we are actually having a living legend that all of you know as our guest on our show today. And it's just our third episode. Anthony, could you believe? Yes, yes, yes. You may know him as everyone's favorite dad that owns a steakhouse, or that one time when he was the Asian version of John Krasinski, or when he schooled Dawson's crack on that one rap show, or his roles in both Marvel and DC universes, and a ton of my favorite sketches and okay. shorts you can find online. Blueberry, there's Ronnie Nishimoto. Okay, uh, Anthony, 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 deep breaths. Calm down, little man. All right, everyone. We are very calmed and controlled to announce our guest today. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Introducing <laughs> Randall <laughs> Park! Hi, Randall. Oh, my fingers are doing something weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how are you doing, Randall? Good, very good. Thanks for having me. That oh was, God, uh, that so was exhilarating. 
Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We worked really hard on that. We actually rehearsed for five hours. So that was this morning <laughs> when we heard that you're able to do this with us. Okay, so to kick off our time with Randall, we're going to play something called Social Media Stalker. Media Stalker. Social Let's try it again. Let's do it. Like, yeah, let's we're going to do a game of Social, social media, media Stalker. Hit it. <laughs> And now we're back. So uh, before oh. we get started here, I wanted to say that Roxy and I have scoured Randall's social media and found these two random pictures that he's going to have to elaborate on. The first one is this one that I picked out. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? You see this, Randall? Yeah, I do see it. Uh, <laughs> did I post that? <laughs> yes, yes. That's so interesting. What is the story behind this? I see... Uh, yeah, geese heads. So on you. that's uh, this. I believe that's Tim Cho. The um, so way back in the day, mm -hmm. I uh, was a co-founding member of an uh, a, what we called ourselves was an artist collective, but we really we were like a theater company that did um, kind of short plays, and uh, this was a play that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the specifics of the story, <laughs> but I do know that, uh, yeah, we, uh, that's Eddie Shin and Tim Chu, both incredible, talented, kind, beautiful people uh, on stage with me. And uh, Eddie and I are playing, um, what was it? I, some kind of bird, some kind of flightless bird. I remember we were flightless. I think that was a, a key uh, part of the story. And then, uh, and then Tim playing, uh, uh, I think, a, a tiger or leopard <laughs> of some sort. Uh, and uh, and what we used to do is for 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 this company, every show, what we did was we actually like painted backdrops. So every every uh, short had these backdrops that were that we painted literally ourselves and hung. So it almost felt like this weird like children's show <laughs> even though like the plays were were actually kind of some of them were, were kind of edgy and 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 naughty if i remember correctly but yeah that that that's from from one of those shows those were those were really great times and it's so weird that you found that <laughs> <laughs> well you guys really did everything back then it's just all hands-on you know grassroots right that's what it was for sure i mean we 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 did i mean not just like performing and writing but uh but like literally advertising the shows renting out the spaces and and uh um making flyers literal physical flyers that we put in like you know stores and restaurants and and um um yeah we we really kind of hustled back then do you think that every artist sort of has to go through that rite of passage in terms of for example not just practicing acting as a craft, if you were to focus on being an actor, but that was so community-based, mm -hmm. what you did. Yeah, I mean, I don't think every uh, actor or performer needs to, to find success, but I think every actor or performer should, you know, they should do it just because it's, uh, I, I don't know, I think it's it's helpful to, to kind of learn all aspects and to, of, of what you do and, and, you know, even at a kind of in that form, you know, to, to, to actually go out there and hustle and know that, see that the more flyers you hand out, the more people will be at that show. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's also fun, you know, it's fun to, to, to do it at that kind of level with friends and with people that you love and to, uh, I mean, theater is fun. Theater is fun. So like, yeah, I highly recommend anybody who wants to be an actor or performer do, do theater, do stand-up comedy, do improv, do stage stuff, and, um, and, and try to do every, every part of the process because it's, I, I don't know, I just think it may, I feel like, I feel like an old man just like talking to the kids, which is actually what this is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah, just uh, uh, do it all. It, it, it will all it will all come back to you later if you if you do it all like the little things you did w you will utilize later in life at, at unexpected places and maybe in different ways but but 
it's all a part of that bag. You know, you're just filling the bag with these skills and experiences and, 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 and that stuff will always be in that bag for you to use. That's so beautiful. We're going to get deep into that in a second, but now it's my turn to pick my social media stalker photo. Oh, so. <laughs> Randall, I, you know, I feel like, um, you know, you were, you were born in LA, right? Like yeah. this is your roots and your, your history. And I always love seeing family photos and the origin story of somebody mm -hmm. and here you were dedicating it to your family and your mom. Can you yeah. give us a little background on what that was like for you growing up? Uh, that must've been my first birthday. <laughs> Wearing, so a, wearing a, a, a hanbok, like a traditional Korean outfit, and, and that's that's usually uh, uh, that's definitely done on 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 uh, your first birthday, mm -hmm. and um, it's so crazy because that chair. I grew up with that chair well into my adulthood. That chair was in my parents' home. Um, uh, yeah, and that, there's my mom. She's so pretty. And, uh, and my older brother. And it, the crazy thing to me about this is I, I look, my daughter looks like me when I was a baby. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> um, but I forgot the question. I'm just so like wrapped into this photo. What was the There question? is no question. It's just yeah. to give context yeah. on, you know, I think how you grew up. And I think that's very yeah. beautiful, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, you know, it was just it was just my mom, my dad, and my brother and me. You know, uh, mm -hmm. um, so it was a it was a tight knit family. And uh, as your daughter grows up, is she still looking like you? Uh, she's kind of yeah, she is. She's kind of looking like I mean, she's like an exact cross between my wife and I. <laughs> yeah. It's, How many it's parents like my can son say too, that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Really? I, yeah. My like, son looks like my wife. Born, she looked like me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then now she's like, as she gets older, she's becoming uh, more and more like my wife. And right now she's uh -huh. in the middle. Yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. So okay, cool. so, I know. Um, so Randall, thank you for giving us some of that background into your family. Now we're going to go into the interview portion where we get to know you a little bit more intimately. Also, oh, wow. our producer, Jack, wants to let you know that she is a huge fan. I mean, she used to run the <laughs> Asian American International Film Festival in New York. And there was oh, a year, yeah. yeah, there was a year where you were in like literally everything. So oh, she was yeah. just like, <laughs> that's, so funny. that's when she fell in love with you. But clearly oh, all of us are in love with you today. Oh, yes. Oh. I appreciate that. That's, we're that's obsessed. here. Obsessed. Really cool to hear. Yeah, there was a period where I was just doing shorts, web stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was really just making a lot of stuff and just putting it out there. And that was probably why it ended up in that festival. Yeah. Randall, it's, it's been beautiful to watch that because I think the very first time I've, I saw you uh, was on stage when you were doing a play with my cousin when I was 13 years old. Oh, and really? Yeah, my, my cousin know, Michael. Did. Yeah, Michael Shen. So, um, well, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. I, think <laughs> I knew that he was your cousin because you had, told yeah, him yeah. Him so, ago. you were hilarious then. I remember you just sitting on a couch and then I, I, I and you, you didn't have to say anything, you were just there and hilarious. I remember there were lines, but yeah, oh you gosh, uh, I wonder what play that was. What, oh, I forgot. Um, uh, three I did roommates a lot of stuff or with, with Mike, I did a lot, yeah, of six stuff. roommates. It was like, oh, a, it was yeah, like an yeah, episode yeah. of the uh, Asian Friends. Almost. That's right. That, that's right. That was the Achievers. Yeah. <laughs> the Achievers. There you go. Right. Yeah. Written by my yeah. friend Michael Lanco, who who's a producing partner with me right now. There you go. It's so yeah. crazy how you guys are still connected and still going at it. You know. So, yeah. yeah like, um, yeah. It's just so fascinating that we know that it with within your college years you did this play. Uh, you were very involved with the Asian American community even at th that time when it wasn't as it wasn't as prominent as today so like what sparked the fire in creating those groups in a time when represent representation was just so different and was the community as involved as they are today um yeah i mean when when i was in college at ucla we started a theater company a, a ucla based asian american theater company and that company still going on at this day is 20 five something years legend but that was like such a great time and a pivotal moment for 
in time for me and for a lot of the members of that company because we just fell in love with performing and writing and, and doing comedy. And so when we graduated, a lot of us wanted to keep doing it. And that's when we formed that group that, you know, you saw the, that photo with the weird bird heads and, mm -hmm. and, and we kept kind of just doing that. And, um, and then throughout the years afterwards, I don't know, it just because of that foundation built in college and post-college with the other theater company, it just felt, uh, I don't know, almost kind of just instinctual for us to, keep telling our stories and mm -hmm. to find folks to work with that we liked and and to 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 get it out in any means possible you know and that and a lot of at the time there were a lot of you know small there were a lot of groups that were supporting asian american things and so mm -hmm. those were kind of avenues that we were able to get some of our work out out into you know uh, on top of other other like we we were you know sending it out sending out videos everywhere you know and we were um performing for everybody you know but but it was in the community that we found the most support because at the time like you say there wasn't as much uh mm -hmm. representation in the in the mainstream media so so people were hungry people were hungry for that they were so so our plays we would pack the houses you know i mean it's still the case today like a lot of these groups put on shows and there's still like this hunger for it within the community. And uh, uh, um, so, yeah, we just tapped into that pretty early. And, and, you know, and there were a lot of people doing it before us too. It was, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, but we, I think we had a very specific comedic angle, you know, that kind of came instinctual to us. And, and that's kind of what differentiated us, I think. That's so awesome. That's yeah. like creating a legacy for years to come by just planting those seeds, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, but we didn't know it at the time. You know, we were just having fun. <laughs> Which is amazing. That That's like what I said about like um, intention versus like wanting validation or fame yeah. or like it, it, your intention has to be very pure for it to really become something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we wanted validation and fame too. <laughs> 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 Which you obviously <laughs> but have received. Also, but, it, but I mean, but it all felt, it always felt like a long shot, you know, all that. A hundred percent. So really it was just about like having fun with friends. And, but that's still to this day what my kind of driving motivation is just to have fun, you know, with friends. And look, like you've become such a pinnacle and a role model for like a lot of emerging actors in our community. We are mm -hmm. going to call you the Beyonce of Asian Americans because <laughs> of the advocacy, honestly, that your work has sparked. You know, like mm -hmm. I think indirectly, like you just being who you are and representing like that has created like a wave of action for a lot of people, whether it's your generation or ours. And I hear, well, you know, you've been telling us about this production company that you started, Imminent Collision. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what is your mission behind that and how has that journey been like for you and your producing and stuff? Uh, it's been so fun and a big part of what's been keeping me busy during this quarantine. Um, uh, I started it with two friends. One of them is a writer from T, he did, does TV, movies, very successful, very accomplished. Another one is a producer, uh, an executive who's done uh, so much over the years. Uh, um, in so many different capacities, running a studio. Uh, um, at early, early on, he was working in a management company, and he hip pocketed me as, as you know, when I was just starting. I mean, just and the, the the cool thing about these two guys is that they both came from this college theater company that uh, we started at UCLA. Uh, so, they, so they've been friends mm -hmm. before I even was like acting professionally. Mm -hmm. um, but we all kind of went our separate paths, you know, in the industry. And then uh, just uh, last year, we we were like, hey, I think it's time we get the band back together and do what oh. we did in college. <laughs> Telling wow. stories that were mostly comedic um, and that came from an Asian American perspective. And we felt like, oh, well, I think the industry is in a different place now than it's ever been. And uh, we might be able to secure a deal with the studio 
uh, to do this. And uh, so we, we went around, all around town to every studio. We pitched our company. We had a whole, like, this whole presentation. And uh, we got offers from, like, every studio. And, and, uh, and we ended up going with uh, the one that kind of, it, it, the one that felt the most right for us. So, so right now we're, we're working under that deal and, and just trying to make great stuff. Holy shit, That's you crazy. literally went full circle. It is like exactly Anthony circle. brought up that photo. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you are right back again with those guys. That's just Exactly. Yeah. What? That's that was the yeah, that's it's crazy. It is crazy how life works out like that. But that's what, what? that is such it. an amazing story. It, it really is. And mm -hmm. I think uh, it hasn't hit me like it like it will hit me eventually. <laughs> it's in the midst of it, but but uh, it is pretty crazy. I mean, I have all photos of you know of the three of us you know in the northwest campus auditorium at ucla just like you know getting like oh, the I'm show getting ready emotional and, thinking yeah, about this uh, this is so touching it's pretty it's pretty crazy but uh, but again it was that time in college that was so pivotal and inspirational and it, it literally planted the seed in, in all of us that, that motivated us and drove us to to, to make it our kind of life's mission to, to do this. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, that, it, we just kind of, it, again, just try to have fun. And that, it brought, <laughs> brought us there and that, that brought us here, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so crazy how it's full circle. Cause like, I know you guys had to go along your own way and your own path just to meet again, right? So Randall, you've been in, uh, like like what Jack said, she's seen you in a lot of shorts. I saw you when my mom saw you in a 21st century insurance commercial and she got so excited about that. That's radical. And that was like very <laughs> early on, right? Early. And you've done, yeah, you've done so much from indies to shorts to sketches, now studio movies. And, you know, not a lot of Asian actors have been able to uh, traverse into those routes, right? So what do you think is the key ingredient for you? And what do you expect to come next for Asian Americans, say after, say like this climate, after the pandemic? Um, well, for me, I think it just goes back to, yeah, having fun and not taking anything too seriously. And, but also having that kind of internal uh, compass that, you know, pointing me into the directions that I wanna go, you know, and, and following what's meaningful to me, but not thinking too much about it, just having, having trust that, that if I, if I have fun and if I'm nice to people and if I work hard at what I do, I'll just get there, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, that's just kind of been my, my kind of modus operandi since uh, the beginning. And then as far as Asian America is concerned and, and, this industry, I think there's, I mean, it's, it's definitely an exciting time. It's changing. There's a lot more um, opportunities and open-mindedness, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's still hard. It's still an uphill battle. It's still, um, it's still, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of a ground to still be broken, but um but it's it, it's a great time. It's a great time, and um, uh, I I think there's a lot of people who are who've taken different paths, but who are uh, who think the same way as me and have the same similar intentions. And I think that's gonna provide a lot of uh, opportunities and a lot of uh, different stories to be told, which which is the coolest part. That's so awesome. That really it. gives yeah. us a sense of hope. Right, you know, right. I think in terms of like, oh, all the strides that we've made in terms of content and the Oscars and everything. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's like so focused on the backlash of the community and like the racism mm -hmm. and all of that coming back. I think it's important for us to keep that frame of mind mm -hmm. to just keep moving forward and keep doing what we do and keep pooping out our content, you know, keep doing our shit. Yeah, like pooping it out. I am constipated all the time. I need to release them bowels. Let it out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Randall, I have a personal question. Yeah. Um, so in quarantine, you've been quarantining with your wife and daughter during this time. You've been 
homeschooling your daughter and what has that been like for you especially juggling all of this now you know and uncertainty what's that been like for you um it's been you know i hate to like i because i know it's like a tough tough time especially for for so the majority of people in this world it is like not a tough time it is not an easy time and uh, uh uh and it's tragic on so many levels but um I don't know. I've been kind of enjoying it, like personally, like because uh, I don't know. I think I'm uh, a bit of an introvert, and I because I've been able to be home and lucky enough to to uh, have the the um, the producing deal and to to be writing a lot, to be working on stuff as a writer a lot. That it's it's uh, it's been busy and fun and and on top of that I get to like be right here with my wife and kid who and that's like my favorite thing in the world you know so (laughs) so it's uh it's oddly been great you know and and but I'm lucky I feel real lucky too to be able to say that but um um I am excited though to for this to end and for me to be able to see my friends in person and Mm -hmm. to be able to uh uh I don't know, hopefully um, see a movie in a theater one. <laughs> Let's do those things that I, do those things that I, I took for granted, you know. Um, but uh, but in the meantime, I, I, I've, been, I've been really, really good. That's so amazing mm-hmm. to hear. We also need stories like that. Yeah. We need to have perspectives like that, you know, yeah. because, and I think that's why you're such an amazing guest on our show today, because we mm-hmm. need to, have like examples of that like what you're doing during this time how do you schedule your day you know how do you balance that parenting thing and you know your wife's an actress too and like all that stuff and and I think we'll be we're really curious on digging into that a little bit later on um Anthony you have one last question right sorry yeah Randall you have been such a leader for this community and I know a lot of people are going going to watch this to to get inspiration from you (laughs) you know and so uh, what what do you think we need to see more, say, like in terms of our leadership or uh, community moving forward after this, um, whether it be in our industry or just the Asian American community? Oh, gosh, that's a tough. That's a, I know. That's a tough. That's, sorry. That's a we, this question. is like <laughs> a great, Jeopardy question. That's a good time to bring out the wine, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Taiwan beer right here. Yeah, sorry. We just no, do it. Please. Constantly happy hour with us. <laughs> I wish I had some wine near, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, that's, that's a tough one for me to answer yeah. because, uh, you know, it's, we definitely need leadership mm-hmm. in, in on so many levels. We need better leadership and we need leadership, uh, within the community. But at the same time, it's like the, the community is not, monolithic as as we all know and different and one person can't represent an entire community uh perfectly Mm -hmm. so yes uh, with that be in mind i think it's really important that we we be our own best example you know and um and and our leaders are in our lives you know what i mean like we have people in our lives who may not be on tv every day who may whether they be friends family whether they be, you know, uh, collaborators, creative collaborators, or, you know, your kid, you know, like <laughs> there, is, there are places to draw inspiration from and to draw lessons from and to, uh, and uh, to, to be inspired by. And I think if we're mindful of that, maybe we won't, we don't need, uh, I don't know, a figurehead out in the public uh, as desperately as sometimes we feel we do um mm. but uh i want to wow. welcome ramble parks <laughs> fucking TED talk bitches i just drop it he's like I, he's like i really I know, can't I like won't. answer this question truth bombs truth <laughs> bombs truth bombs that was all just pulled out of my ass I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well you know what i'm constipated you're clearly not so <laughs> but, but yeah but yeah no i think you know thinking back to what i just said yeah that's mm-hmm. real. I, I think that, that 
that works. But yeah. <laughs> Randall's but like, yeah, nice no, to, that was a great answer, have, Randall. <laughs> yeah, that was It'd awesome. be nice to have some, like, better leadership in general. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, you know, I really love that answer. Just looking to the people around you, looking at your circle around you, surrounding yourself with those thinkers, you know, mm -hmm. and just being able to take what you want from those that you admire and leave the aspects of those that you don't appreciate. You know, I think that's yeah, like I such that. sound You're advice. Right. Like, You're right. Um, You're right. No, no, Randall, I could just be, I could just see you be like, yo, Randall, good job. Good <laughs> answer, Randall. <laughs> Because <laughs> earlier he's like, yeah, that was a good answer. <laughs> I just, it's like he went we'll into a being like, this. yeah, he went into a being like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, and it's like, wait a second, I could run for president. Um, okay, just oh, kidding. Man. <laughs> Never, but, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your insight, Randall. Okay, so you know, uh, we told you this in the pre-show, but one of the reasons why this show was created was because Bethany and I were really observing that artists in isolation were struggling to feel mm -hmm. inspired and creative. I want to be able to have our guests share some process and tips in order to remove their block in strenuous times like this. So, Anthony. So, Randall, I have a question for you. We all know you're hilarious. You also rap. You've done stand-up. You've directed, wrote, produced everything. The thing we're probably all most curious about is how you start your writing process. And what does that look like for you? Especially now you're doing it like 24 seven. So, I have a tr yeah. feature treatment due tomorrow that I haven't started <laughs> yes. yet. So I would really appreciate- I'm lagging on the series outline. Yeah. <laughs> Any insight, because they've been asking me for four weeks please. and I haven't started. So please help. Please. Well, uh, for me, this is the thing. It's tough to, you know, I mean, People are different and they, they mm -hmm. different things work for different people. But for me, uh, I know you had your deadline, Roxy, but, uh, and it's, it, may, it may not be helping you as much, but uh, <laughs> deadlines help. Like, <laughs> deadlines, <laughs> deadlines certainly help me. Uh, and if I'm not given a deadline, giving myself a deadline, like, uh, uh, really helps. And not just like a deadline to completion, but a deadline to the first two pages, you know, like mm -hmm. a deadline to the first, uh, uh, you know, first act, a deadline to, you know, just kind of s segment out your, uh, your deadlines and, and also uh, give yourself more time than you need, you know, to, to, to achieve those deadlines. Um, and also another thing that I just thought of is I, I don't know, for me, it's like, oh, I'm super productive for like four hours, maybe three hours a day. And outside of that, I'm kind of garbage. So, uh, <laughs> so like, just yeah. like a lot those, those three hours and then for the rest of, uh, or four hours, whatever it is for you. And then for the rest of the day, don't put pressure on yourself. Just, uh, you know, drink wine. Do you go super yeah. hard in those three <laughs> hours? Like, no. Like, mm. I don't think, I, I just make sure that for those three hours, I'm sitting in front of my keyboard. That's it. And uh, uh, and sometimes things don't happen in those three hours, but then the next day, twice as much will happen, you know? So it'll always like kind of even out in the end. But, um, but uh, yeah, I think it just, I guess it's, I guess it's all about just kind of being kind to yourself and, and, and knowing that there's, it's not always going to, you know, work out perfectly. Like you're not always going to churn out magic, but, but uh, if you sit down and try uh, every day for a, just a, a short period of time, then it, uh, then it, something will, well, something great will happen, you know? Thanks dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I do feel like a dad uh, <laughs> talking to my kids. <laughs> no, because because everybody works so differently, and um, like now that you're doing your work, you know, at home, and you're not going out on set, and you're not in theater, not doing stand up. It's like it feels very different now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're just working from home. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But but you know, another trick. This is for me. And it works for me. It may not work for any anybody else, but I, but I like to go in my car, and drive somewhere, park mm -hmm. under a tree, 
pulled out my laptop and gave myself two hours to write. And I'm super productive in my car. It wait, weird. But wait, 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 wait. You go in your car and you park under a tree or do you well, get I'll just out? drive somewhere away from home. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll park under a tree because I like it shaded. I don't want like the sun like uh, 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 blaring through the windshield. And oh. then I'll, I'll park and, and I'll write. And I, I am almost always productive when I do that. For me, it's... It That's like a weird me. psychological, like spatial thing. Too. Yeah, and you know what it is? I think mm. it is psychological because I, I was used to like, if I, if I was going to like a pitch meeting or if I was going to something where I had to turn something in, I was used to writing up until the very last minute. Like, I, you know, I would drive, uh, like I would work, be working on my pitch like right before <gasps> going into the room or I'd like, or I'd, if it was an audition, I'd be like in my car working on my lines before, you know, right before going out into the uh, audition. And it just kind of trained me to like be productive in the car. I don't know, just over time. It's just kind of this mindset, this, this kind of. It's a confined closed space kind of thing. I, I, I do better work in the bathroom on the yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, it is, so. and you're also not going to be interrupted, and right. you know, like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think everybody has their thing like that. Mm -hmm. So just find your thing, whatever that is. But, you know, that's so yeah. interesting because it's like the the car is basically the space where we're always going to these different things, going to set, going to meetings, mm -hmm. going to pitch. It's like what you're saying, Randall. I do have a question um, that doesn't have anything to do with the quarantine, but I think this is very helpful for all of our director, filmmaker, producer friends out there, because not a lot of us have had experiences doing a pitch. Right. And it's nerve wracking. I remember when I did my first pitch, I went to like a, um, a female filmmakers group the night before and asked for tips. And yeah. no one really <laughs> gave me any useful advice because everybody was just like, well, we just sort of just do it. Like we don't, yeah. can you explain what that is like for you or how get get tips on how to pitch okay. look i haven't been doing it that long to be honest with you i mean maybe mm -hmm. you know, in the past like less than a year i've been i've been doing it but it, i mean and i've done it before that but i mean really in the past like year i've been really kind of enjoying it and 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 really like loving kind of the art of it because it is and it's like auditioning auditioning is not acting right uh so you got to learn to love everyone loves to act but you got to learn to love auditioning if you want to really get good at it right so it's like making a, a show or a movie everyone loves to do that but you got to pitch the show or you know you got to pitch it you got to pitch yourself if you as a director you got to pitch yourself as a costume designer you got there's always like pitching uh but ultimately i just like to think of it as storytelling because you want to um, and you want to entertain, right? You want it to be entertaining. You want it to be informative. And um, you want it to be, um, uh, you want it to be personal, at least at the beginning. Like that's really important to, to, to share why, why you, you know? And I think if you can, exp if you can do all those things, then, it, it, it becomes like a little show for them. And in the process, they get to know you, not just as the person who's right for the job, but also just as a person. And I think that's uh, when people get to know you, it's like exciting for them to meet a new human, you know, and to, to feel a uh, human connection, like in, in, in any way. I mean, that's what auditioning is too, right? You, you're, you're making a human connection. And uh, I think if you approach pitching in the same way and, and, and that pitch is is a uh, reflection of 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 yourself and uh, and who you are and your sense of humor and your and you know all those great things that make you who you are. Then then it becomes like beguiling to the to whoever's you know on the other side of that pitch. It's just like you can't help but kind of be drawn in, whether you end up getting the job or not. It's like. Um, it's 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 fun for them so so that's that would be my my tips i guess 
So, um, Randall, I like uh, I, I I'm coming from like an actor's perspective, right? Um, and a lot of us actors just know how to act, right? Um, but we we would love to produce something and you and and write something as well. Uh, uh, there's what is this? Uh, we we we've uh, <laughs> sorry, Randall. So, what would be the like a, a few good words of wisdom for every actor to try to step into who wants to try to step into like say like producing or writing something but don't aren't af are afraid to go in there and take the first steps mm. Mm. um that's a good question because i have like this debate with uh my wife sometimes about mm -hmm. um well, about act like my my wife thinks that some people just have the talent, right? Mm -hmm. They're born with the talent to act or to write or to do whatever, and and that uh, for them, uh, for people who don't have the talent, it's just they just can't. You know, they could try, they could work hard at it and try, but it just they just weren't meant to do it. You know. Mm -hmm. I, on the other hand, believe that everyone can do it, you know, that everyone is capable of, of doing it. I do, I think some people may have to work a little harder, you know, mm -hmm. may, they may have more blocks in them for various reasons, uh, uh, but if they can work hard and get past those blocks, then like they can be just as good as anyone, you know. And uh, so in, in that regards, I feel like actors who feel like they, because I hear that a lot. Oh, I'm, I can't write. I can't write. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like if you have an idea and we all have ideas, everyone has ideas, right? Mm -hmm. If you have an idea, you can figure out a way to get that on paper. And if you ha and once you have it on paper, you could figure out a way to expand on it, you know? And as you expand on it, you could figure out a way to tell it in a fun way, you know, to make it more fun, to throw in uh, fl more flavor or throw in more colors or throw, you know. So I, I just think it's about like, it's, it's kind of like what we talked about earlier about steps, you know, like creating those little deadlines. It's like, just, just do that. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down an idea that I had today. That's all I'm going to do, you know, and then tomorrow I'm going to read it. And then the next, I'm gonna, overnight, I'm going to think about it. And then that's going to spawn more I, thoughts. And then I'm going to write down those thoughts, you know, just kind of step by step by step until you have a, a before you know, it, you have a short or you have a, a pilot or you have a feature script, you know, who knows. But, mm -hmm. um, but I just think it's a matter just just doing it. And I, then there's a reason why people don't do it. And I think that reason has to do with fear of mm -hmm. failure, fear of, uh, you know, judgment, fear of, uh, but it's like, if you kind of prepare yourself for the possibility of that and, and tell yourself like, okay, maybe this isn't good. When, if people say it's not good, make a promise yourself, I'm going to try it again with another mm -hmm. idea, you know, uh, because I think that that's the thing that kind of keeps people from doing stuff. It's just this fear of, mm -hmm. of it sucking, but like people have to suck, right. To, to get better and oh. get there. Uh, so it's like, so there is like an element of courage to anyone pursuing this, mm -hmm. this uh, industry or, or this line of work, you know, because uh, we are kind of, we put ourselves out there for so much judgment and so much uh, rejection. And um, so, yeah, if you just find the courage, find the courage to try. You That's hear that all, right? actors out there? That's can so do it. beautiful. We can all do it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Randall. Thank yeah. you so much, Randall. Okay, we have a few Q&A questions. I have two from audience mm -hmm. members who have submitted before the recording of this show. Anthony, take us off. So we have a question from Mr. James Tang. <clears throat> Randall, you've done so much in your career. Is there any project or role you still want to pursue? Mm. Uh, I mean, there's nothing like specific, like, oh, I got to do that, you know? Gonna but, be in black and white, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke <laughs> remake. 
I would love to do something in black. And white. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's so funny because we were just talking about that <laughs> production company meeting. Um, but uh, but uh, you know, I, I wanted to I want to direct mm-hmm. more, and uh, I, I definitely want to write more, and um, I, I do want to keep acting and. But there's nothing like specific that I'm going for. I mean, you know what? I'd love to be a detective, like in my own sh- series. That would be kind of cool. Ooh. <laughs> I'd love to be a, a, um, I don't know. I still love rom-coms. And even though I have I did one, I'd love to kind of keep doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. I think uh, that would be super fun. I just love to kind of keep playing lead characters and things. Uh, Hell Yeah. And and different kinds of things, things that are different from what I did before. I think I think that's really it, regardless of what kind of role that I just want to do different things uh, that are fun. Randall are Park still... in a film noir sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like Randall, are you are you drawn to like horror and like uh you know just biopic dramas? Like I know mm-hmm. you're in the comedy space a lot, but is there any desire to explore those? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'd love to do all that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know Great. about biopics. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know who I'd play. You know. You already played Kim Jong Un. I played Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that was the goal. And, uh, <laughs> and <that. laughs> amazing, amazing. Because I'm like thinking about the de- detective. I'm like, like true detective. Like that's kind of that's a vibe. You know what I'm saying? Or like sweet. I would love that. that that's would- a vibe for you for sure. Okay, so our last question is um, this question we have is from Michelle Torres. Randall, can you freestyle rap for us? <laughs> can no. we throw down a beat? <laughs> I can't. I can't and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. You're going to have to stay days tuned. Were, days were uh, a very long time ago, but I think people like think that I still do it because of the movie. No, yeah. <laughs> and so many people, so many people reached out like, you guys have to go on tour. <laughs> like, None of us really play instruments. We were faking it. <laughs> You're so convincing, though. It's called acting. Charlene, he plays, acting. <laughs> Charlene he plays many instruments. That's actually not true. But, uh, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, it was like a fictitious band. So, uh, yeah. No, I'm too old. I'm too old. You're never too old. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, it's like you've been all of these things are multi hyphenate, and now mm-hmm. it's like you're going to be directing a lot more, producing a lot more, running a lot more. Randall, we're so excited to see. Ah, uh, yes. Like honest, and if you ever need someone, well, now with COVID, I don't fucking know, but I make great <laughs> sandwiches as crafty. Um, so I can make you a sandwich <laughs> if you ever want me to. Pretty good, right? Thanks. Pretty good. That's my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was great. That was Thank very you. personal. Thank yeah. you, Randall. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So, that was fun. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, we're we're going to wrap this up. All right, guys. This is all the time we have for today. Uh, so I'm sorry, Randall. Before we let you go, do you have any final thoughts, words of wisdom for just any emerging artists? You've gone through actors, some you know, producers and writers, but just artists in general during this difficult time. Artists in general? Um, gosh, uh, be easy on yourself. Don't, don't, you know, you don't have to like write a novel during this quarantine, you know, you don't have to like do anything really. You could, you could just, you know, just be and just try your best to get through it. And that's fine. Um, uh, but once it's done, hopefully you'll have, uh, some perspective, a, a different perspective on things. I think everyone in the world is going to have have shifted a little bit as people and and mm-hmm. see things a little bit differently. Uh, but for artists, hopefully that shift will will you know help conjure up a lot of new interesting ideas and and projects and 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 ways to to creatively express yourself. Um, but even if that doesn't happen, that's fine too. You know, <laughs> just don't put too much pressure on yourself. I think that would be my only thing. Thank you so much for Thank everyone you, for coming to today's uh, Randall Park's TED Talk. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Was it. Imminent collision. Yes, amazing. Oh, I had some gems, didn't I? I, I, I gave up some <laughs> you gems. You gave it some was breaking knowledge. Like, you, this could go on your resume for sure. Because <laughs> exactly. we're such a popular show. We're a quarantine <laughs> show. So, <laughs> honestly, thank you so much, Randall. Like, mm -hmm. like, it meant so much. You have no idea, like, how much it means to us that you were able to give us this time. You were you know, yeah, our Randall, first, you wonderful. were the first person we thought of when we, when we uh, like, came up with the show. And I appreciate it. You're like, it's a, such mm -hmm. a far fetch. Like, you know, he's so busy and like, this means so much. Like, it really does. Of course. Like, we almost, fun. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Randall. Again, we almost just died when you answered us. And we we're like, oh, he's, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, we got him. Like, oh, so, what yeah. you get today? Let's a little, let me brush my hair. Fuck, you know, like, it's, it's yeah. great. <laughs> Um, so yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Randall, for coming on the show. And uh, mm -hmm. everybody will be transitioning to our next section here. <sighs> it was like reliving our time with him again. Yeah, I think great. I'm in love. Me too. But you know what? I think I've been in love with Randall since I was like a tween. I told him like since I was like 13, I've known him. So I've been yeah, been in love with him since I was 13. Anthony. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, I don't like competing, but the sibling rivalry is just so natural <laughs> to us, okay? It's just so weird. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, Anthony. We've been mm -hmm. on air long enough. I don't know how many people are still watching this, if they're sick of our faces <laughs> or what. So, Anthony, are you mm -hmm. ready for final thoughts? I am. Let's get the bumper ready. Ha! <laughs> Anthony. Yes. <laughs> you still I'll, just, I'll just do my final thoughts like this right now. Okay. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> uh, okay. What are your final thoughts on the show? You know what? I think just to, uh, Randall has talked about his whole full circle journey and it's reminding me of how our full circle journey has been. I've known you rocks forever now. It seems like I like we've been on set you were a first AD I was the lead actor and and then we and then we met up and then we did a film festival together and now we're doing a quarantine show I think uh my final thoughts really is to just keep keep uh the the loves of your life close to you as you grow and then maybe you'll come back one of these days and do something great together again so it's just a reminder of just yeah yeah, friends, keep your friends close. You know, that's the, that's what I was getting from mm -hmm. his whole thing as well, because he was like, I just want to play with my friends. That He kept saying mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the whole interview. And something else that I loved that he said was that, you know, we're asking about leaders and stuff. And he said, if you can't find faith in those leaders, find faith in those around you. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. look to those around you and i just thought that was such sound advice because we get so yes. angry by what we can't control but at least by surrounding ourselves not i'm not saying surround yourselves with yes men or people who think just like you because i think there's a downside to that as well but like mm -hmm. at least engage in conversations with people that you look up to or that you would like to debate with or like mm -hmm. have a real engaging constructive dialogue with that can help you expand your perspective on something or maybe have you find a way to change things with your own abilities in your own way with what you can do and yeah. so i love that because i was like yeah if you can't look to those that you can't touch look at those around you who you can in a consensual right. way. Ah, ha. <laughs> the bottom chip. Ah, ha. Ah, ha. That was great, Rox. I can't thank believe Thank you. you just, yeah, thank you, Randall. For thank you, Randall. Up we love you. And, yeah, you're so inspiring. Thank you. So, Rox, I mm. think that's it for now. I know you no! guys have that. I know, but they had enough of us. They've had oh, enough of us. I'm sure. I Look at all you. Love everyone. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for tuning in. But make sure you tune in next Saturday on Facebook Live and or YouTube at 2 p.m. Pacific, which means our next episode is next Saturday, May 30th. So don't miss out. We're going to have Leonard Wu on next Saturday. It's going to be Woo! awesome. You've probably seen him Leonard in Reve Leonard Wu! <laughs> Revenge of the Green Dragons he was in. Also Netflix's Marco Polo. And probably you've seen the latest Alita Battle Angel. 
And make sure to follow us on Facebook at So What Now Show. For those of you that already liked us and follow us, thank you. That's how you get updates on our live streams and our postings and everything that you love to see regarding us. And uh, on Instagram, <laughs> So What Now underscore show. This is the Blue Haired Bum Show signing off. And this is Acne Scarred Gangly Stick. <laughs> Thanks, Gia. Waving goodbye to you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Take care. Tune in next bye. week. We love all of you. Mwah. Mwah, See you mwah, soon. Mwah, mwah. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Ew. Oh, God. No tongue, please. I No. No. Wouldn't be. <laughs> Credits. Got it, Jack. <laughs> Hi. I, hi, I'm Ronnie Nishi. Hi, I'm Ronnie Nishimoto, personal trainer to the stars. Stars such as Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, Abdul Jabbar, Vincent Chase, and Michelle Hui, only because of her Asian heritage. Are you having problems with the ladies? Maybe that's because you're not physically or mentally fit. <laughs>